Hey guys, Sam G here today and um, today we'll be starting the new series of the, making the chain reaction game with the Godot engine. So the, um, if you don't have the Godot engine already, just go to Google, um, just uh, type godotengine.org and go to the site, you can actually download the engine for free. Uh, the engine is completely free, I think it's about 45 MB or so, uh, the engine size, it's just a single EXE and um, all uh, uh, all of the engine features are packed into that in single EXE so when you run that single EXE you should get this window and after you get this window, this is actually the project manager window uh, there is nothing very bizarre about this this is all the list of the projects that you have and this is create the new project import another project that your friend made uh, this is the rename project and the remove the project from this list so this is uh, um, really basic so what we're going to what we're doing is just the new project um, I'll call this the chain reaction right so this is a project name and to actually have the project path I already made a folder called Godot games I'll make a new folder I'll also call it chain reaction and I'll hit OK and again set, select the current folder and as you can see it gives a tick mark that this folder is empty it always wants an empty folder to make a new project so after hit create and edit um, you should get the screen here so this is the Godot engine um, the first thing that you actually notice is this is the 3D world space um, which you actually put all your 3D uh, objects into it so there's also the 2D world space to make 2D games um, 3D world space for 3D games uh, there's the scripting window here uh, this is used for um, basically, basically editing your code uh, this is the asset library you can go online to actually find a lot of cool stuff that people have made for this engine a lot of components um, So we'll be going to the 3d space. Uh, we'll be making this game in the 3d space because uh, actually we want to have the spheres right the spheres for all the um uh, balls that will be popping by clicking so first thing that we want to do is create a grid and In that grid we want to add a number of uh, Buttons which are in the 3d space so that when we click those buttons we will place a sphere in each one of those places so um, uh, The first thing you need to do is you need to save this whole project uh, as a scene so these windows that you can see these are all the other windows you just add one plus so what these four are are scenes so you are not saved them that's why they are showing empty so you can save I'll just delete this and you can save this scene if I if I try saving the scene so this operation cannot be done without a tree root all right so this means that each of these scenes have to contain something called as a node node is uh, everything in Godot there are a lot of types of nodes so you can go to this scene tab here in the right uh, if you want to add a node to a scene so just hit ctrl a uh, you will get a lot of list of the types of nodes that you can add you can see that there are a lot of types of nodes for various purposes uh, these are the control nodes uh, these green ones are the control nodes that you can add for all the UI purpose like uh, keeping buttons in the grid, scrolling, uh, viewports, so labels, panels, trees, tabs, okay, uh, these are all UI components and uh, for all the 2D animations and 2D object collisions, uh, 2D light, so Godot also supports 2D light uh, uh, in its engine, so there are a lot of nodes uh, feel free to just explore what are all these so these blue things are for um, the 2d game engine that is this window that I showed before um, for that uh, this is the red things are for the 3d world space so these are the special nodes because we'll be doing it in the 3d world space we'll be using the red nodes 
but this is the first node uh, that we are creating so this node will be at the top it will have a lot of children which are different types of nodes so this node will just use the basically the node which is the white one this has no special properties which is just a node so we'll just create that so i will just rename this double click to rename i'll just rename this as uh, chain reaction so uh, and another thing is make sure you don't uh, include any spaces in the chain uh, like in the naming so because you need to reference this uh, again by using the path so it is better you reference the path without any spaces um, so this is the one node so now as we have a node we have the root of the tree right here so now we can save the scene now hit control s so this saving of the scene um, the scenes are saved as the extension .tscn which stands for text scene files so all of these scene files uh, they can they are uh, st stored in a text format so you can use it in uh, a notepad and just edit whatever you want and edit all the properties that have changed so it's really easy if someone doesn't have an engine you can give them uh, you can they can just open it in a notepad and they can edit some features that they want so that's really handy so i'll just save the engine um control s to save this scene and now we will have to create the grid as i told um creating this grid takes a type of node called immediate geometry so immediate geometry is a type of spatial node that is the red kind of node that means it's used in a 3d space so select the chain reaction here hit control a um and then just search for a node called immediate geometry so we got here so it's a type of red node that is deriving from the spatial so it derives from the spatial node so you can see the properties of all the nodes here in the hierarchy so this geom immediate geometry has a geometry instance which extends from visual instance visual instance extends from spatial spatial extends from the node so every every uh, one of these uh, um, components above has to extend from the ones at the bottom so as you can see uh, this hierarchy is correct because a node type uh, sorry uh, a spatial type can extend a node type so this node type has only a node and this spatial type is already extending a node over here so it can be added as a node um, so as this is a spatial type uh, what this node is used for is creating uh, dynamic meshes that means that you can um, uh, for example you just have a square and you want to warp it into a triangle uh, like on the game uh, dynamically so it, this node is actually optimized by the engine to do that um, and some the, these are the kind of meshes that changes over time so that's what what we want because uh, we will uh, set different objects uh, sorry not objects we'll set different materials to that object we'll be redrawing these grids every time we set um, change the player's turn so also we want a line kind of structure so it's really uh, not good to just go and place each one of those lines in we will your programmers will do it programmatically so to do any um, things with these nodes these nodes provide functionality all right so to use those functionality and to make those nodes communicate with each other um, we should attach something called as a script to it so to attach a script to the immediate geometry node i'll press this button over here plus button so attach node script so i'll just call this script as uh, something called grid maker right okay i won't use any spaces yeah grid maker dot gd dot gd is an extension for the godot script file this is the language that uh, the godot engine makers have made for this game it's very optimized and it is very python like so when you hit create you can see that this is the empty script so um here what we'll do is um one sec um yeah 
so first thing what we'll do is we'll make a function to actually render the grid so syntax for that is func render grid right like this and you need to hit pass to actually uh, provide a line ending for that uh, function so it will be like a closed curly uh, closed flower bracket okay so for the function if you don't hit this I mean if you don't type the pass it will give an error that the function is not completed so this basically means an empty function just like the ready one over here um, so this render grid is as you can see this script is extending the features of immediate geometry so immediate geometry has all the dynamic mesh creation tools that we require so for um, for this case we'll be using uh, three main functions which is the begin which and then the processing and then the ending so first we'll add the begin function so it is self dot begin so it means that it's called on the immediate geometry node our node so the first parameter that it takes is what type of mesh to actually begin um, um, what type of mesh to actually start uh, rendering so I can, as you can see there are a lot of meshes here so lines is if you add two points inside this fun um, inside this function uh, it just draws a line between those two points and uh, there, there are triangles if you give it three points it will draw a triangle between the, all the three points so what we are looking for is something called as line strip line strip means if you add n number of points it will join a line between all those n number of points so this is very handy to make just draw a grid right uh, using using these functions so I'll select the type mesh dot line strip and we are not actually adding any texture to it so I'll just type null and then the next function is adding the points so the function is called self dot add vertex oh, um, add vertex so this takes in a vector 3 that is a position so vector 3 data type in game engine uh, it's just a spatial type uh, that means that it just has three floating point uh, numbers uh, these represent the x-axis z-axis and x y and z-axis in the 3d world space so these uh, data types are used usually in game engines so you don't need to actually type the new keyword like this new vector 3 to create the type of vector 3 um, you can actually just use vector 3 like this, this is very python like and I'll just add a new point of 0 0 0 that is the origin and let's just add two more points to actually see the line being rendered so this is at the origin and the next point will be at two units to the right and the next point we can add is two units to the top All right so at the origin two units to the right and two units to the top um this is like two lines it should draw and to close this up uh, i told that we'll add to add the function end begin will start the rendering and this is the render block and then end will signify that you have to um, stop the render so this uh, function is called render grid it should be called in order to actually execute just like you have the main function in C++ uh, C sharp Java all those languages um, the main function will be called by the compiler right so just like that these game engines have their own functions that are called by the compiler so one of the examples is ready you can actually see that it's called when the node is added to the scene for the first time so that means when the node is added to the scene that means when you run the engine uh, for the first time this gets called so this runs only once just like the main function in all your uh, uh, basic programming so I will have to call this function that I created render grid so what you will see um, so I will just hit play now 
so just to run this file uh, scene and just select the fourth button here it will play the scene that means the current scene you are selecting here and you play we will get a blank gray screen uh, because we are actually rendering the 2d world space here so what Godot engine does is it checks for the scene if there is no camera to take the input from the 3d world space it will render the 2d world space right so in the 3d world space what we need is a camera node so this node is actually capable of seeing the world from one perspective and then just outputting that um, to the screen so we shall add a camera node to this uh, chain reaction game so i'll just select the node hit ctrl a again to add the node and now i'll just search for camera so we'll take the base camera that is here node spatial camera so as you can see camera node is also red that means it's a type of spatial node it is a 3d node so you can see that there is the camera sitting here and it's looking towards this side and there is a box where the um, camera is looking towards so this triangle over here uh, tells which side is up for the camera and um, because we are rendering in the x and y plane over here right so the right will be the x-axis and the y so I'll just move it back in the z-axis so that we can actually see what is going on right I'll move it back three units so in case this is not snapping to the grid like this like it's happening to me so you can use this button over here uh, or the shortcut is y just use this button to actually uh, turn off the snapping or you can turn back on the snapping right so I'll just keep it uh, behind like this in the z-axis and now uh, that I've added camera I'll just hit play now now you can see that there's a faint line that is being rendered from the origin to the two to the y-axis and the this is the third point so uh, nice that we actually got the rendering um, the next thing that we'll be doing is we don't want the gray color it's not standing out right um, in this background so we'll just uh, add a new color to it so whenever this immediate geometry is added so um, there will be a default material added to it so a material is something that defines the properties of a 3d node that means if there is a sphere you add a material to it this material or a type of object it contains all the information such as the smoothness the metallic how it looks um, so what is the color of the object and what is its physical properties uh, how it interacts with the light how it bounces is it rough is it very smooth so does it emit the light so all these properties are uh, held in by the material so now we need to change the color of this material that that has been added to the immediate geometry by default so in order to do this first we have to create a new material you have to change the color property of that material and then add that material to the spatial node which is geometry here so we need to override the basic material that's already inside so go to this over here uh, select immediate geometry go to its properties inspector um, here's the material override just click on this and select a new spatial material now we added a new spatial material new material of our own to this object so after going inside I don't want this material to be shaded all right so go to the flags tab and uh, this unshaded option over here just tick that and we want the color of the object to be white this uh, just white um, for first uh, we'll go to the albedo option so this defines the color of that material it's already white so I'll set, just set it to white and now if we hit play we should see a white line over here right so this basically means we are rendering it correct so now um, just uh, this testing of these uh, 
nodes is done here so now we'll be using all these functions to actually make the grid itself and the way I'm going to do this is in a few steps so I'll just be rendering the horizontal lines bracket first layer alright so in order to make a grid I'll first uh, define a few bounds right so actually to define how many rows and how many columns the grid has so for this I will type var so in Godot engine um, okay never mind um, I'll just declare up B that refers to upper bound will make it zero uh, where down bound uh, will make it five so it's from zero to five I want six rows from top to bottom so where left bound um, I'll just name this as zero left will be zero and right I want something like right b is equal to 9 so it will be 10 rows from left to right and then 6 rows from top to bottom and after I do this um, we need to render the grid like in a zigzag fashion first I'll be going from the bottom to the top by this fashion like this like a snake so zigzag fashion um, that's why I use the line strip so I don't um, actually have to define every two sets of points to make a line render I can just um, um, just uh, add on the points and it will go joining all the points so that is why I use the line strip over here and the first thing is um, we'll just create a for loop so for um, this is very similar to python for i in range that is zero that is up bound to down bound right you can see the auto complete is also good it um, suggests properly um, so if the i the row the, the row is an even number so if i mod 2 is equal to is equal to zero um, what we'll do is we'll add a vertex add vertex a new vector 3 again so now which point to add now actually what I want in the scene is if you select the node get back to this 3d space what I want in the scene is I want to look from the top to the bottom all right because the um, the ground is actually darker color I kind of want that so I want this camera to be in the center and you, um, just um, rotate this using this circular handles here just click on it and drag and rotate to about 90 degrees like this um, and then I will just in order to see all those nodes I'll bring it up like this so as you can see if we are actually looking from the top we would want this to be in the origin in the zero right so we want to start from the origin and you want to render top of that and to the right of that so because we want to do uh, like this um, I want the position of each of these uh, points that I'll be placing to be exactly matching with an array that I'll have uh, we'll have the data layer in a separate layer and we'll have the visual layer which is very similar to the data layer because uh, we'll be starting from the origin and we can easily uh, add up these points from the origin to the right and to the top um, easily with the position so if we want um, a, a position which is phi comma phi so we'll just go in phi comma phi that is the position also of the object is phi comma phi that so so we'll have to have a positive value to the right and a positive value to the top right if you go to the top you should have positive and if you go to the right so in this case if you want to have the positive value to the right you can have the x over here so this arrow direction represents the positive value so it will go positive 
but if we have to have a z axis the negative will be down right the positive will be down sorry the positive value will be down so we don't want that we want the positive to the right and we want the positive to the top so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rotate this world like this so if you see the world you can see that the positive to the right which we want is z axis and the positive to the top we, which we want is actually the x axis so what we'll have to do is we'll have to swap these two we'll have to take the zero to um, the left to the right as the z axis and then the down to the top as the x axis right so in order to get the positive of the right and to the positive of the top so we'll go back here and the first parameter that i have to give is the z axis right z is going to be the left to the right so left to right is nothing but i and then the y axis that is the depth in this case because we are actually looking from the top right so the, let the depth be zero um the z axis is actually um the left bound we'll be starting from the left side so left b it is so i'll just copy this and then just paste it so after going to the left side of the point we want to go to the right side now so so in the even row we want to start from the left and end at the right right and now we'll just make an else statement so if it's in the odd row we'll basically have to swap these two orders so if it's in the even row we'll start from the left to the right and if it's in the odd row we'll go from the right to the left right and this happens for up bound to down bound that is actually 0 to 4 because this for loop doesn't include the next um, it includes the up bound and it excludes the down bound so we want six rows right so i'll just do a plus one here okay now we'll say the same and now if i hit play i am seeing some lines getting rendered here right so so i just remove these and now um because i have to point the camera to the top like this i'll rotate the camera um make sure um go go to the handle that is the green handle rotate it like this so that this pointed and uh, like uh, faces to the top so now if i hit play i will see a zigzag line starting from the origin to the right and then right to the left left to the right right to the left so on so this has the spaces i think it has five spaces right zero one two three four okay this is one two three four five and i do want another space at the top so because i've made zero to five um i think yeah um i'll make this as six so it will be zero to five that means okay i'll just add plus one to it so we'll actually uh, i will recenter the camera now because uh the right side is about 10 units right so i'll make it to the five so up is about six so i'll just put it at three now it should be nice and centered like this okay we have six rows like this and now we'll have to do the same thing from the top to the bottom okay so after this we'll copy the same for loop and then now it starts from down down bound and now it ends at up bound and because this is actually reducing the count we'll have to give it a third parameter called minus one right so if it's in the even number the same thing that is the first one should start from the left go to the right like this and have it a zigzag so um without doing this uh, you can comment it by using 
the triple double quotes just like in python i think it should end at the right point yeah so i want to start from the left now and go to the right fill up this space go to the left fill up this space go to the right fill up this space so i will want to start from the left itself so left is the starting point in the even row so now if i do this um I should get like this uh, the last is not rendering um, because the up bound is not actually included so I do a minus one so it includes uh, the upper bound that is zero right so now we get a nice grid right so after we do the horizontal lines now what we'll do is it ends um, to check uh, where this ends, I just add a new vertex, right? So self dot add vertex. This can be anywhere. Um, I just make it minus one, my uh, zero minus one. Okay. So if, if when you hit play, you can see that the line ends at the rightmost point. We don't want this. We want everything to end at the bottom left point at the origin. So what we'll do is we'll just add an extra vertex after these four loops. Uh, we'll add the left bound and then we'll add the up bound, which is zero. Okay, so I'm using the convention up bound as down and down bound as up. So I'm basically reversing these because in Godot engine, if you go to the 2D space, um, uh, I want to actually copy the convention of the 2D space where the positive comes downwards and the positive is to the right and downwards. So up, up is actually zero and you go down, it increases in value and to the right it increases in value. So I want to follow the same convention that way I'm naming this as up bound as zero and the down bound as um, the uh, as the positive most value that is six. So now um, yeah now if you hit play it should end at the origin yeah cool it's ending over here in the left. So now we'll have to create these vertical lines. That means. Um, now we actually created the plane like this right horizontal lines on the plane now we'll have to create the depth lines we'll have to zigzag the same way with the depth lines to actually get to the next layer and then render the same thing in the second layer so now we'll get these sort of cube grids finally so now I'll just add a comment called vertical lines so there are four set of vertical lines one for the left hand, one for the top, one for the right, and one for the bottom. Right, so we'll do the same thing for i in range. Uh, this starts from the up. First, we'll go with the left side. So this will be from the bottom most to the, that means up bound, to down bound, plus one, right? Because you want the last one as well. So the same thing, if i more 2 is equal to equal to 0, what we'll do is we'll add a self dot add vertex and this will be um, having the x that is vertical like this, right? So the vertical value here um, needs to change. So that is i, the y will be 0 and the z will be that is the horizontal one remember we are swapping the axis so the left bound will be in the z left and right bounds and the upper and down bound which we are looping around is in the x right x is the top to bottom z is the left to right so left bound will be the third one so again if we copy this again and paste now what we need to do is we need to add the depth line, right? So I'll just add the depth of 2 here. So else if it's an odd row, we'll do the same thing that is copying and swapping these orders. 
so now if we hit just a uh, uh, hit play we should see these uh, what's that oh yeah uh, this is these are vector trees right we should add the vector trees oh okay just copy this add a bracket here and add another three brackets here so now if we hit play aha uh -huh, see you should see these kind of depth lines which are appearing over here right okay i'll just comment out that uh, extra vertex we added so these are the depth lines that we want so it's actually two units to the top right so the same thing should be done so we shall copy this and paste it and now this should be from the left to the right because we are ending at the left one and to the right one so this is going to be the same depth lines at the top so left b to the right b yeah we should include the right bound as well so plus one um now the x shall be that means the vertical value shall be the same right so that means uh, it will be down bound because it's above so we're swapping up and down so while doing this you should remember that so it's down bound down bound here it's basically going to be i so now if you hit play you should see the same zigzag lines in the top cool so we are getting these and now we will do the same thing we'll copy the first one paste it here is going to be same from the up bound to the uh, down bound but this is going to be in the right side right so I'll just replace all these left bounds to the right bounds like this and then again I'll copy these the second one the second line and I'll place it in the bottom so this is going to be um, from the right to the left oh yeah so the first is from up to the down that is down to the up and it's going to be from the left to the right and then from the right it is going to be from down to upright so i'll start it start from the down down bound to the up bound um minus one yeah so so this is going to actually reduce the array so i'll have to increase the third parameter as minus one so it's also going to be from the right to the left uh, minus one as well and I'll give you the parameter minus one so this is going to be in the up up bound that is going to be the down line so we should actually go in the order of clockwise like this right so okay nice so we are getting, getting all these horizontal lines now let's just check where the ending line is uh, just copy this same line that extra vertex we added and I'll just paste it remove the comment hit play um not able to make up where it is but yeah I'll just change these values just um do something different so that I can make out <laughs> so yeah it's ending at the top point so this is okay because we will be rendering the second layer from here right so so we do want the top uh, part to happen okay so oh okay I just forgot one thing it's better we actually render these uh, vertical lines as also first right so as we are in this layer we did the first two for loops we also added third for loop to actually render these uh, vertical lines so we shall do that so after these two for loops now it's in the left bottommost point that is left and up bound so again I'll add a for loop this will be from left to right left bound to right bound there is plus one right so yeah uh, 
left bound to right bound plus one you have to add plus one so if i mod two equal to equal to zero so i'll just add this thing so this will have zero itself there will be no depth um the first parameter is i right so you know no um i should be left and right right so it should be the second parameter and now it will alternate between as it's in the downmost point i want it to go up to up bound to the down bound good so again we shall swap these like this so again if you hit play you should see a bunch of horizontal lines that are also being rendered so at the end of this um here 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 it is going to end up at this point so i also notice that we are actually having nine of these rows so what i will do is uh, i want this to actually include both of them so bound minus one okay we'll um figure that out later i'll just in increase this one to around 10 now so we should actually um render 10 of these lines as you can see it is ending over here and the vertical lines are starting over here so we need to add a point here about this one or this one so i'll add this one that is the upper bound and the right bound right so after this one before adding the vertical lines i'll just copy this and just paste it here so the x this one will be um okay um this is already in the left and up okay i want the right and up to be added right cool so i'll also add another point just in case so that it ends up in the left bottommost point i'll add the left line as well left b like this oh okay it's going somewhere i think some x and y has been mismatched oh yeah up bound should be the first one and this should be the right bound first because it's the z axis and the left bound okay cool if we swap those this should be proper cool it's coming like this it's not uh, noticed it's coming unnoticed and the loop is stop starting from here so now what we need to do is we need to copy this whole thing this is the horizontal lines first layer right we should do the same horizontal lines in the second layer i'll copy this whole thing i'll just make a comment horizontal lines bracket um second layer like this all right so if i paste it uh it will still print out in the same layer because the y is actually zero you need to convert all these zeros to two manually so like this Z two 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 and two right so now we don't I, uh, as we are done actually rendering we don't need these two points I guess so just read them now basically we should have the whole grid over here okay there is some point getting added oh yeah I'll just comment this out as well so as you can see we have the whole grid here uh, this is very nearby and we are not able to actually see so we need to be actually uh, able to see this more far off distance so i'll take the translate i'll put it way high so now if we hit play you should basically see this grid okay, it's too small now we'll keep it about here probably uh, I guess even more nearer what about this one good good this is good but uh, I don't think we actually need to 
do two units right so that's a lot so what I'll do is I'll change all these y units to one one here one here one here one here one here one here so I'm just having a lot of depth so it should be very elegant to look at not very deep I don't want a tower so hey, next um so now we should actually be able to see the grid properly so this is the proper grid that we have actually created so thank you guys um for watching this episode if you have any doubts or if you want to share anything if you have um uh, you can just uh, ha uh, put that in down in the comments section below so we'll see um how to add uh, the buttons for these uh, grids in the next episode until then see you bye bye